Hey everybody, Cameron here with the C Butters channel, and we've been playing around with the Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core processor. And uh, you may have seen uh, several people uh, kind of brought to light by Derbauer that uh, there's some interesting overclocking dynamics with the 3900X in terms of overclocking clocks per CCX. And what we found is uh, basically there are usually one or two core complexes that are much better than the others. Generally, core complex 0 and 1 are the stronger ones, while the second core or the second chiplet on the uh, Ryzen 9 tends to be, at, at least as, as far as, as the few people who have reported on this, seems to be much weaker um, than the other. So um, in overclocking, we've we've seen a lot of CPUs have all core overclocks, but um, now we're running into a situation where you have a strong set of cores and weak sets of cores, and I'm kind of curious to see if by prioritizing um, which cores that games use, if you can get boosts in performance. So what I wanted to test today is uh, simply uh, going to the extremes. And in order to do that, you can see I've got four different core complexes on this chip. The, the best of those uh, overclocks to 4.45 gigahertz. Uh, the next best one, 4.4, and then on to 4.3 for the last two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically gimp all of my core complexes, go to extreme, bring them down to 1.4 gigahertz and leave uh, just one CCX with a high performance, simulating a really nice core complex with high speeds and weaker core complexes, so strong and weak. And then I'm gonna run a game benchmark and see how well it performs. And then leaving it at the same weak and strong cores, I'm going to uh, prioritize the affinity uh, to the core complex zero, which is the much stronger core. So in order to do this, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, Derbauer did his per CCX overclocking with a special utility, but you can do it right in Ryzen Master. In fact, it I, I find it doesn't take very long at all. Um, so just to go over that really quick, this is kind of your mapping layout of your core complexes. And like I say, I'm gonna GIMP these core complexes. And I'm going to GIMP it down to 1.4, and I'm going to do that on all core complexes but one to kind of simulate the worst case scenario when you have weak cores along with a higher clocked um, core, so core complex, sorry. So I'm gonna bring all these down to 1400. One thing to keep in mind as you're uh, playing around with these overclocking settings in here is you definitely want to clock all cores inside the core complex. So anything in the CCX1 should be the same clock speed. Uh, same with C with all of these CCXs, you should always set the same clock speed. So. Um, this is important because of the dynamics of the Zen 2 architecture. You can run into some issues if you don't do this. You could you could GIMP yourself, basically. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these settings. And you can see that now I've got uh, three of four core complexes capped at 1.4 gigahertz to simulate three weak cores with a strong core to see what happens in games and whether prioritizing affinity is actually going to make a difference. Um, so uh, in order to do that, I'm just going to do a regular game benchmark. Although, uh, just to start us off, um, I have run this test using uh, Cinebench and single core, and then it just depends what particular thread it happened to grab. But performance is either really good or really bad, depending on which random core it seemed to grab. So in Cinebench, you can see a dramatic a difference in single core performance. So I think in gaming, if we can find a way to uh, really prioritize certain cores um, over others and let the system know how to do that, you, we might be able to tap into some really nice performance results. So anyways, in order to benchmark this, I'm going to uh, run 
a common benchmark, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I'm just going to let it right now. Uh, you know, it's 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 somewhat multi-threaded, and um, I'm just going to let it run kind of it's you know whatever whatever core it's going to grab it's going to grab at this point by running this benchmark so i'm going to go ahead and run this benchmark i'm going to stop my uh recording software just to not affect the results but i will be back in just a second okay with three weak cores and one strong core um we are ending up with and three weak, one strong, an overall score of 113.50 frames per second. And we kind of went um, 47 min, 225 max, 27.6 min, 128.41 max and a 46.8 and a 119.44 max so that's kind of our baseline so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use a program called process lasso and I'm going to go and find the Tomb Raider uh, process and make sure that I set the affinity. Now I've, I've already set these. Um, you can see I've now prioritized um, the first set of cores. These are my strong cores that are at 4.45 gigahertz. And um, so that should force this application to choose these cores over the others. So Let's go ahead and close that down. And I am going to go ahead and restart this benchmark and see how it goes. OK, so some dramatic results here. So when we force the process to run on the strong core, we get an overall of 173.79 frames per second, which is up from uh, just Windows choosing 113.50. Um, and our min results went to 86 min to 312 um, frames per second max, uh, 72 to 160, and 85 to 162. So a dramatic improvement here. But uh, this isn't maybe telling the entire story. I th OK, so we've, we've kind of proven a point that uh, Windows does not know how to prioritize a core complex that has higher frequencies than one that does not. Um, un and uh, basically, what we we're, were able to prove in that test is, you know, by forcing applications to run on certain cores, uh, you can make things run faster. We saw we went from um, 113 frames a second average to 173 frames per second. However, um, this is slightly misleading because when we forced it to run on those first three cores, uh, what Windows considers CPU 0, CPU 1, CPU 2 does not necessarily match up with what AMD considers core complex 0, cores 1, 2, and 3. I mean, those don't, I mean, there's 24 over here because it's threaded. So um, the other thing that happens, even though you may see one, um, one thread, like here you can see you've got CPU 8. And it's probably actually somewhere here on core complex one. And you can see the load bouncing around between cores. So it, the, it's not a one to one ratio of what Windows thinks is a core and what's actually happening on the processor. 
So there's no way to directly assign um, programs to cores. You can just kind of push them um, in the right direction. Um, so it, it, there's there's interesting dynamics going on here. Um, some of the main things to, that that you can take away from this is AMD was very smart to set core complex zero with the best set of cores because Windows tends to use, I've noticed that it when you play games or something, you'll see a lot of times it will prioritize and drop threads on CPU zero, one, sorry, zero, two, four, six, eight, and 10 in that, in that uh, Tomb Raider benchmark. And that rather than using, you know, CPU 12 and CPU 20. So by just default and almost sheer luck, most of the threads end up on the first core complex. So that is a great move by AMD because, you know, you're going to prioritize performance just, just inherently because it seems that the Windows scheduler is not aware of core complexes. Maybe maybe it is, but what I'm seeing here is it doesn't seem like, like it is. It's capable of using them, of course, um, because otherwise what would be the point of having all these cores? But um, it there's no way to prioritize which cores are being used. So if you if you could force um, all of the threads of a game onto the first core complex, you would get a boost in performance. There's no there's no doubt in my mind. However, there's no way to actually do that. And, and if you know of a way, uh, go ahead and let me know. Um, I was do brute forcing it by letting the application only run on three cores, which by default put it in here on core complex zero, but I but there's was not a great way to specifically say, hey, use this core because it's faster. And it could, you know, I can think of a few ways that that developers, uh, game developers, it, it could um, maybe take advantage of this. Maybe they could run a quick benchmark on every core and test the speed of, of each core before things loaded up. Just, you know, a quick quick test to, to see performance per core and then drop the most high priority game threads on the cores that they see are strongest. So that'd be one way to do that. But um, really, um, it'd be really cool if we could, if we could get um, applications, multi-third applications to choose the correct and quickest cores out of, in the core complex. That would be really cool, but it doesn't seem to be happening other than the fact that the fastest core complexes are the first 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 CPUs, or at least they they were in my testing here today. Um, but that said, the, the CPU that it shows the thread on, it still bounces around within that core complex. So it's not directly one-to-one -one there. So... Um, definitely some improvements could be made, but, and, and we definitely showed that, uh, having a stronger core and then moving the threads to that stronger core complex, um, can help performance. In reality, I don't know how effective this is because, uh, you're, you're kind of by default going to have most applications start out on the first six threads <laughs> for the most part so it's I don't know it'd be it'd be interesting to see some more testing on this um, but anyways I hope this was maybe useful information and can get us thinking about ways that maybe we can do this um, differently I don't know if there's a software application like process lasso where you can not say hey only run these cores, but say, hey, use these cores, but also use the rest of the cores if available, but prioritize these ones first. Um, I don't know if that's that's out there. Um, let me know in the comments. 
Uh, but uh, anyways, thanks for watching. Um, it'd be really interesting to see more testing in this sphere. So uh, thanks again. We'll talk to you later.